Hello, everyone. My name is Aisha Khan. I am a graduate student in the Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry working in Dr. Rani So's lab. But my project is based on establishing a knockout system for diadenosine tetraphosphate hydrolase using the CRISPR-Cas9 genome editing technology. Diadenosine tetraphosphate, also called AP4A, is a small molecule derived from nucleotides. It is composed of two adenosines uh, joined by four uh, phosphates. AP4A is also found in all living organisms, including prokaryotes and eukaryotes. The concentration of AP4A increases in cells in response to stress, such as oxidative stress, genotoxic, or environmental stress. AP4A is also known to interact with a number of proteins involved in important cellular processes like mRNA processing, tumor growth, and metastasis. However, its exact mechanism of action and pathways it, uh, it regulates is not entirely understood. To understand the role of this molecule in cell physiology, it is important to um, understand how it is synthesized and hydrolyzed. Dicyl tRNA synthetase um, is an enzyme that is traditionally involved in charging tRNA with lysine to be used during protein translation. However, when lysyl tRNA synthetase um, is closely related, it is withdrawn from this canonical function and it starts to promote uh, the synthesis of AP4A by combining ATP and AMP. So the synthesis of the AP4A is carried out by lysyl tRNA synthetase, whereas it is hydrolyzed by NUDT2, which belongs to the NUDX hydrolase family. NUDT2 cleaves AP4A into ATP and AMP. Now, this hydrolysis of NUDT2 is very rapid, making it very difficult to study the effects of um, AP4A in cells without knocking out this hydrolase. So, my focus so far has been to develop an um, NUDT knockout cell line using CRISPR, which would help a lot in studying the role of AP4A. Here is a CRISPR design that I use. CRISPR um, is a gene editing technology adapted from the defense um, system of microorganisms, and it allows us to precisely modify DNA sequences. CRISPR stands for cluster regularly interspaced short palindromic repeats, which refer to the short repeating sequences um, found in the genomes of organisms. Cas9 is the protein that acts like a pair of molecular scissors that can cut DNA at a specific location. And a guide RNA is required to recognize the specific sequence. It binds the DNA next to a PAM sequence, which basically guides the RNA to the sequence and uh, specifies the exact cut location for the Cas9 protein. Once the Cas9 protein binds to the DNA, it cuts both strands, uh, leading to a double stranded uh, break, and a repair process um, takes place. So the repair process that is non homologous and joining can be harnessed to introduce. You know, small deletions or um, insertions to the DNA, which can cause frame shift mutations and gene knockouts. So instead of using a single guide RNA, I designed two guide RNAs that can recognize sequences um, in close proximity uh, on the target gene, which is NUDT2 in this case. This technique would enable to achieve a high indel rate, and it would also make detection of the knockout easier. So after designing the gRNAs, I inserted uh, them separately into uh, two plasmids, and transfected K562 cells uh, with these two plasmids simultaneously. After transfection by electroporation, the cells were sorted uh, for the positive GSP signal by fax, and then turned uh, uh, them for screening into 96 well plates in order to isolate the cells with their active knockout. The CRISPR design was expected to result in a loss of 109 base pairs in the fifth exon of NUDT2 gene. So the resultant band would have a size of uh, 175 base pairs. Um, whereas the original band has a size of 284 base pairs. So based on the presence of this 175 base pairs, as you can see in this um, egg or rose gel, the native band is 284, and the knockout band, as you can see in all of these colonies that I isolated, uh, is of 175 base pairs. Now that I have successfully isolated these colonies, my future plan includes um, protein expression profiling by Western blot to see uh, if the knockout actually works. Also, I am currently working on confirming the loss of the 109 base pairs by sequence analysis. Once the knockout is established, we can use it to study the effects of AP4A abundance in cellular pathways and how it um, affects gene expression in the cells. In the end, I would like to thank my PhD supervisor, Dr. Rani So, for her immense support and cooperation. I would also like to thank my lab fellows, Duke and Sanat, for always being there to help and encourage me. Thank you all for listening and have a good day.